Welcome in to the Online Enquirer podcast. It's Jeremy Warner and Derek Piper to start us off. We're going to bring in Joey Wagner a little bit later in this podcast and do something that we failed to do last year. And maybe that's the reason Illinois had a disappointing year. Because the last time we did this in Illini all Big Ten draft, Illinois had a really good season with a lot of good players who ended up getting all Big Ten honors. So we're going to bring it back, Derek Piper, and uh, basically just pick which Illini we think are going to get all Big Ten honors or have the best chance to do so and then award points. Uh, I did win a couple years ago because I picked Devin Witherspoon in the first round and Johnny Newton, who had the breakout year in 2022 in the third round. But you had Chase Brown first overall pick. That was a good one. Just ended up being a really good year for running backs and probably should have earned first team anyway. Yeah, uh, I hope to put together a more respectable performance. Chase Brown was an easy one to pick going into that year. We got Blake Corum in, in, in that uh, year as well. Is he the guy that got first team? Yeah. Um, Blake Corum. Oh man, why am I forgetting this now? Uh, there were three stud running backs, but Blake Horn was certainly one of them. Yeah, so uh, we'll see where that goes. I wonder where Caden Fagan is going to go in this draft because he certainly has a chance to be a strong contender this year, put up some big numbers. But Mo um, Ibrahim, Mo Ibrahim from Minnesota had a hell of a ah, yeah. When he was healthy, he was a monster. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, nah, I can't wait to do that, and uh, hopefully, us doing our part by starting this thing back up. We'll, we'll get an exciting season brewing for Illinois. Well, we have our preview and picks ready to go. We're going to publish those either Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. Uh, Derek Piper is, well, I don't know, a three-time winner in that uh, with the prediction. So when you look at our preview and picks, I know Derek's the quote-unquote basketball guy. He knows what to pick, okay? That's why we let him do the – uh, his Piper's picks if he wants to continue doing that. But uh, you are much better predicting what Illinois football actually does on the field on Saturday. So 10 and two last year. Pretty good, Derek. Um, I think Ryan Easterling was next at eight and four, and I was seven and five. Joey was 500. And Isaac Trotter is usually good at this too. He, he went under 500 last year. It was a tough season of predicting Illinois, but you made it look easy. You know, I, I wish I was wrong more often. It, it would have been uh, a more enjoyable season for people out there. Uh, I did talk a little trash. I think Isaac was the reigning champ the year before, if I'm not mistaken. And I kind of called my shots that I'm coming for your for your championship belt this year, which I, which I did. So, uh, yeah, let, let's hope for uh, a more exciting, uh, more competitive team down the stretch. They're always in games, but obviously a tough front end of the schedule. And I uh, can't wait to get this thing rolling up. But, yeah, I, I enjoy the competition of the of the predictions. Um, maybe it's just me, you know, having watched Illinois football my whole life. There's a, there's a, a tinge of just kind of injected skepticism. Uh, I think maybe that's helped me with my my record here and there. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see how this season shakes out. I'm hoping for uh, to be pleasantly surprised by what they do this year. Uh, we're all pretty positive about the first game, by the way. That, that's a that's a tease. Uh, I think most people think Illinois will win this game. But let's start this podcast talking basketball. I had a lot of fun, Derek, talking about the front court for Illinois. We focused on five players in particular, mostly four, though, that should play. Ben Hummerkhaus, Thomas Slava Visich, Merez Johnson, Kerry Booth, and Jason Jacks is put in that mix as well. Uh, next week, we will focus on the backcourt, which I would call the league guards, three guys uh, that we'll get into then, Kyle Boswell, Kaspar Shonis, and Dre Gibbs Allhorn. But today, let's focus on four wings. And to start this conversation, I think it's interesting because wing can encapsulate a lot of guys. Like Hummer Gauss could be in here, you know, uh, if we really wanted to put him in here, he could play a little big ball three if they really wanted to. But thinking of last year, they had maybe the best wing duo in the entire country, even though you could call Marcus Damask a league guard at times. But Terrence Shannon Jr., Marcus Damask, two all Big Ten first team players, Terrence Shannon was an All-American, uh, but you lost both of them. Ty Rogers returns, likely in a different kind of role than he was in last year, but um, because you had a different kind of guards. But Illinois also brought in Louisville transfer Trey White, five-star wing Will Riley from Canada, and Mercer transfer Jake Davis. So last year was kind of a wing-driven team. Derek, what's the identity of this group of wings that Illinois now has? Yeah, I think overall you're looking at complementary pieces uh, where the previous two years, you go back two years, you get Matthew Meyer, Terrence Shannon uh, as your your A guys, your, your go-to options in the offense. Uh, and then now with more backcourt talent, Kaspar Shakachonis, obviously Kylan Boswell, uh, those are going to be probably your main drivers in terms of ball in their hand, making things happen. 
Now, Will Riley in particular, who will break down individually, I think has a number one, a high ceiling. Number two, they, they really like his ability to, to go get a bucket off the bounce, to be able to uh, be a decision maker, guy that can draw multiple defenders to him because of his scoring prowess. And they think he's an underrated passer and just someone that elevates people around them. So, uh, yeah, I think if you did put Hum Rickhouse in there, we could be talking about obviously a little bit more added scoring punch um, because as we've talked about through the previous months, he could potentially be Illinois' leading scorer. He's a dynamite three-point shooter. But, yeah, I think with getting someone like Kasparis, uh, having a veteran guard like a Kylan Boswell, you're talking about largely more off-the-ball type of roles for these wings and uh, are going to have to get some improved defense, uh, obviously out of, out of the team as a whole, but hopefully a guy like Ty Rogers maybe guarding more wings uh, is something that elevates this team's production on the defensive end. Trey White seems capable with his athletic size and, and build. I don't know what Will Riley is going to be like. A decent athlete overall, um, obviously, you know, six foot eight, lanky, but uh, how ready is he for that? So I, I think there is that part of it to break down as well. But in general, a, a pretty talented group. You know, Ty was a top 50 recruit, now a junior. Will Riley, five star. Uh, Trey White was an all freshman in the Pac-12. And I think some people probably forget that about him. And, and really, as a recruit, was at one time a five star. Ultimately, I think it was a top 50, uh, maybe even top 60 guy. But somebody that's got uh, a decent, you know, skill set and, and overall talent level to him as well. And, and you know, Jake Davis kind of that specialty player come in and, and shoot threes if he gets those opportunities, but it does sound like he shot the heck out of it over the summer. I mean, that's what he does. It's good timing because you just released your player outlook on Ty Rogers. I want to start with him because we know what he is. We, we know what he brings to the court uh, for an Illinois team, but he feels like one of the most high variance players on this roster because I can see a 25 minute a game role uh, for him because he brings things that other guys don't. But also uh, when he's on the court, it's easier to guard Illinois. Uh, so even though he brings things rebounding defensively, um, it's just easier to guard. And we know Illinois is kind of sided with offense. So what do you kind of expect of his role? Or what are the potential roles that he could have? Because he has, as we said, a little high variance here. It was kind of difficult to, to put a real forecast on that when I was writing it up. Now, uh, I think for, in terms of like, what his function on the court is going to be. I think that's easier to, to say. Now, of course, there is the the jump shot progression, which we'll have to see in person. Uh, the outsiders that weren't there every day in Ubin, uh, you know, we got some clips of it on Twitter over, over the summer and people were excited about it. I understand. I mean, it, uh, it looked like he had confidence, number one, and, and some more fluidity to the jump shot. And obviously, if you can make a couple of those, then you got to maybe rethink some of what you're doing defensively against him when he's in lineups out there. And if you don't, then maybe he does make some teams pay with making a, a few of those. So uh, outside of that, like you said, he's, he's got known strengths. Um, I know Merez, we talked about in the front court, maybe he's going to have the highest rebound rate on this team. Ty Rogers is going to be in that mix, I would assume, especially in terms of offensive rebound. He's been in the top echelon in the Big Ten in terms of offensive rebounding rate. I wrote that in the – player outlook. He was fourth last year in Big Ten play, offensive rebounding rate, third as a freshman. So he's got that ability who's someone that's off the ball a lot to attack uh, and really slash to the glass. Um, he's got a good vertical. He's got a six foot 11 wingspan and just a nose for the ball. So um, I think finishing at the rim is something we've talked a lot about with him. Uh, it, it's been inconsistent. I think overall, you look at 59% at the rim last year, decent. It, it's not great. It's not terrible. Uh, can be, can get better. And you can kind of pinpoint different games where like, oh, he had a handful of nice, you know, athletic finishes here. And then the UConn game, he's 0 for 5 uh, and some others where maybe he leaves some points out there. So uh, I think just continuing to hone that uh, and trying to be able to, when he does get to the free throw line, make those at a more consistent rate as well. So with him, and we kind of discussed it on the last pod is that potentially with the way things shake out, I think especially Will Riley. I think Will Riley is going to have a lot of say of kind of what that path looks like for Ty. And, and look, Will's season could be a roller coaster, especially early, potentially with, with just a, a freshman that is going to have some, you know, usually built in expectation of inconsistency. But if Will's a dude, if he's a day one starter, if he's someone that's going to get a lot of opportunities right off the bat, maybe then Ty has to either behind him uh, carve out his role there, maybe be in the mix at the four uh, for some for minutes as well, uh, because I think Benham Rickhouse will play a lot behind him. There's some questions. Is Kerry Booth going to get those minutes? 
Would it be Ty? Would it be Trey White potentially? So I, as I formulated it and thought about it, I think Ty's going to play slightly below what he played last year, in my opinion. I don't think he's going to start as of right now. Now that could change. Like he could have a great fall. He could be someone that Brad's like, I, I love, you know, in a, in a season that's got so much newness, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of excitement about that newness. I could lean on somebody that I'm very familiar with that started all 38 games for me last year. It's going to do some things. Well, we got scoring. We need somebody to go rebound. We need someone to play kind of a, a – be willing to be that effort guy, that gritty on the glass defense guy. And if he does guarding some wings become all of a sudden, which I think he's capable of a plus defender, then maybe all of a sudden he's someone you don't want to keep off the court. So that's where you kind of get into the, he could play 25 and maybe be a starter because Brad loves the familiarity and maybe even the jump shot is good enough to where he's less of a liability. Uh, If it still is something that he doesn't bring and, and you can kind of cheat off of him uh, I think about some of the main matchups you're going to see early. Cliff Amori for Alabama, Jonas Adu, Arkansas. Some of those more athletic and bigger rim protectors, you can kind of clog that lane and limit Illinois' offense. So um, ultimately, I'd say probably because of the competition, because of where they view Will Riley, I'd say less than 23. Maybe it's closer to 18 to 20 minutes. And uh, the low end, of course, could be could be 15. And he could be really fighting for it. So um, a lot of options, a lot of different ways Illinois could play it. And the good thing is he gives you versatility that, you know, he can play one through four. Uh, but he's the guy that, you know, him and probably home Rick house, like throughout the off season, I'll be like, okay, his role of what I thought early on in the off season might be different than what I thought, you know, late. And um, it's just, when you add guys like Kaspar Shakashonis, who's going to have the ball in his hands as much as anybody on this team, I thought Ty Rogers could have had a role there where he's the booty ball guy this year because we've seen flashes of him being pretty good at that uh, as long as he improves those efficiency numbers at the rim at the free throw line but now i just don't know how many opportunities he's going to get in that i think most of his offense is going to come through offensive rebounding and then you add a guy like will riley and that's 20 to 25 minutes on the wing they are not bringing in a five-star kid with this kind of one and done talents he's still going to do it of course but they're not going to not play that guy right like this is this is a nev- next level of talent and to be honest with you, if I'm an Illinois fan, this is what I like about what Brad Underwood is doing. He's not handing the job to Ty Rogers like a Tom Izzo would right now. Uh, even though I love everything about Ty Rogers, there's just other players that score better. And Illinois has sided towards the offense. And I love that Ty Rogers does things that a lot of people on this roster don't. He is going to guard. And I think he's going to guard better when being on the wing. He rebounds the heck out of the ball. I got questions about rebounding with this team. So he's going to find a role, but that could be 12 minutes some nights. Like that, that could be 20 minutes other nights. But the one thing I like is I don't think that's a problem for Ty Rogers. Like I, I just, he wants to win. Um, of course, he always wants to play more and he wants to, to do the most, but this guy seems to care uh, about winning the most. And that's why I think Brad Underwood doesn't probably have to worry too much about bringing Ty Rogers off the bench. Yeah, I yeah. agree with all that. I think he is somebody that's low maintenance in terms of the number of shots that he needs, uh, the, the buy-in to winning uh, above self, that, that those type of things. Of course, it can be difficult. You know, we talked about a lot last year with, with Dane Danger. Uh, I think it points, obviously, Luke Goody probably would have liked to play more. Um, so you, you'll see ultimately how that plays out. It's interesting, though, because you can convince yourself one way or the other where the way they've constructed this roster could put Ty in a better position to do what he does well and not be asked to do things that he doesn't do well, uh, especially defensively. I I think on the ball last year, trying to guard point guards, trying to navigate through screens, trying to keep quicker guards out of the lane. It it just wasn't, wasn't good for him. Maybe now that he's on the wing, he could be a real impactful defender as somebody that, and that they could use that because I don't know how good of a defender Kaspar Jacachonis is going to be. I don't know how good good of a defender Will Riley is going to be. Uh, and I'm Rick House. So having someone like that could certainly help them uh, offensively, too, with the spacing. If, if you can find a way, whether it's the dunker spot, if they're going to play a lot of ball screens, you put them in the dunker spot, uh, you, you kind of just maybe you booty bottom a little bit or just slash them to the lane or even just as an offensive rebounder for a team that's going to shoot a lot of threes. That's a lot of long rebound opportunities. You need somebody that can really go find the ball and, and create second chances. So uh, I could convince myself why he would be out there a decent amount. I could convince myself why, because I, I do, you've said it multiple times and I I'm fully in agreement. Like they're siding with offense. They, they, if they have to choose which 
way they formulate their their lineups. I think they want more offensive firepower at the expense of some defensive shortcomings, liabilities, what have you. And there's a potential, I think, when he got added, like Trey White might just be a similarly sized, more offensively capable Ty Rogers. Now, I don't think he's the same in terms of like, I think his rebound's decent. Ty's probably a better rebounder. Ty, I think even though Ty maybe wasn't great defensively, Trey obviously wasn't very good at all defensively at Louisville last year. So there's some of those thoughts, like maybe Trey steals some minutes from Ty because he can actually shoot the three. He can actually make a play off the dribble and and pull up into something. So um, that's where there's there's some questions. And, and again, like Will Riley being one of the higher ranges of outcomes of, of him could really solidify him on the wing. Like you can't take him off the floor. Yeah, like we're going long on Ty, but it's just because he's so fascinating. Um, I want Ty Rogers on my team. I continue to say that I think your team is better with Ty Rogers among all the guys who are potential to come back who are under like not seniors. He was like the guy I wanted just because you know, I know Brad under the everyday guy thing. Like, yeah, it's important, but like he does epitomize that. And I just always want a guy like that on my team. And I think he and Marez Johnson bring that a lot. Those guys are just a little bit different uh, than everybody else on the roster. All right, I want to take a minute to tell you about Home Field Apparel because they are the premium collegiate apparel brand and they're based in nearby Indianapolis. Home Field sent me a few shirts and what I love about them is, of course, they have incredibly comfortable, well-fitting shirts, but they also have officially licensed apparel with vintage college designs. And they have more than 180 plus available colleges, including, yes, your Illinois Fighting Illini. They have great gear for the upcoming football season. So for the warm weather games, check out their Script Illini t-shirt, the Orange Ringer tee, the vintage Oski helmet or for the fall chillier games check out the script Illini hoodie the flying Illini hoodie the flying Illini quarter zip and if they're still available you might want to check out homefieldapparel.com for this check out their script bomber jacket it is awesome also don't miss their can't miss kickoff 2024 campaign so home field is giving away these special football boxes and these platinum vip boxes include three never before seen items from your school that are not available anywhere else they're curated so fans have new gear to wear all season long suitable for all weather conditions and these platinum boxes also include other exclusive items including a new hat or ringer a vip koozie and a 2024 platinum pass which guarantees 20 percent off and early access to your school's football releases through the 2024 season the football boxes are available on august 9th so these will sell out quick so go check them out go to homefieldapparel.com to check out their great selection of illini gear and use code illini24 that's all capitals illini24 for 15 percent off that's illini24 for 15 percent off at homefieldapparel.com you brought up trey white there's a proven double digit score in college basketball now he was on a bad team he was pretty bad defensively, and I think he probably understands that. But uh, off-season buzz for him, especially early, Derek, was very, very high. Is he a starter? Is he the sixth, seventh man? I don't know, but it seems like this guy is going to produce. So what is Illinois getting in Trey uh, White, and, and what do you think his impact will be? Yeah, six foot seven, decent athlete with size. Uh, he isn't a great shooter, but he's had some moments where he, he can – especially – Mid-range pull-ups, uh, mid-range game is something that he likes uh, as far as being able to, to make shots there. Three-point line, we'll see if he can get more consistent or just take better shots that will up his efficiency. Uh, somebody that is has some decent wiggle off the dribble can get to the rim and, and do some things there as far as that goes. Uh, Rebounding-wise, that, that has been a strength, so he can go to the glass. I think it's just trying to – similar to Quincy Garrier, is he has – the makeup and some of the track record of, of previously being a pretty darn good rebounder, but sometimes it's eluded him for one out of a reason, maybe motor, tenacity, consistency. So trying to tap back into that and, and get him to, to really buy into like, hey, Avicius may not be a, I mean, he's 7-1. I don't think he's going to be a bad rebounder. I think he'll be decent, but you know, you might need more rebounding from some other positions to be able to, to compensate uh, you know, and also I'm, I've talked again about long rebounding and whatnot. So I, I think he's somebody off the ball going to the glass and getting those second chance opportunities, finding a way to to get him back into fully buying in defensively. Like, hey, you're you're six seven, two oh five. You're a pretty good athlete. Like, you should be a good defender. Like for the most part, you played two years of high major basketball. You've started a bunch of games. Like you should be at, at least serviceable, if not a a decently good defender. So. Um, 
the feedback was really good on him in the early weeks of this of the summer. I'm not saying it like died down or anything. It just kind of pivoted maybe to some other guys. Uh, I think as of right now, I, I've kind of I, I've thought of him as a starter for a, a decent amount of time. I think recently some of the feedbacks pointing to hey, it's probably gonna be hard to not start Will Riley. Um, so maybe he comes off the bench. There's still time in the fall, obviously, to sort all that out. But I, I do think Trey is going to play, you know, 18, 22 minutes a game and be somebody that they feel like has a has an ability to to get closer to who he was at USC, which is an all freshman guy and a guy that played on a on an NCAA tournament team. I was going to say, so if if we're putting together most likely to score double digits this season. I think Kaspar Shaka Shonis, Kylan Boswell, and you and I have been on the Ben Hum House. So is that the top three that we go? And then it's Trey White and Will Riley, right? Like is it, so this is a guy that no matter what, I think is going to kind of be in that eight to eleven or twelve point range, right? Like this is a guy mm-hmm. that's proven and I think can, like you said, just give you a little bit of everything. So it's a guy that can play small ball four, can play on the the wing. If especially if he can shoot at a higher level, that's gonna be a key for him. But you know, he's got a ceiling of being able to play professional basketball, obviously, and maybe have a chance at the NBA. So uh, if, if this is your fourth, fifth, sixth guy, I think this that's talking about a good roster. For sure. No, I, I was reading an article when he transferred from USC, Sam Vecini wrote something for The Athletic that said, you know, NBA people were starting to, to talk about him, not necessarily as a one and done, but a guy that one more good year or another a step forward after an all-freshman year, and, and he was – potentially a, a two and out in college and, and go into the NBA. So uh, Louisville didn't really help his stock. He, he put up bigger numbers in terms of volume, uh, bad team, th- those type of things. So uh, now coming over here. Yeah. I, th- I think that he is somebody that's, it's probably more capable than, than people would imagine. It wasn't like a super sexy ad in the portal. Uh, but yeah, I, I do think, you know, 13 a game at Louisville uh, in a high major league. Yes. The volume is going to go down, but maybe the efficiency goes up. And especially if he's an offensive rebound put back guy, uh, that could really help him. But with Riley, I I, I would side with Riley. If, if he's going to get a full allotment, they're going to start him from day one, give him a lot of shots, give him some wiggle room to, to struggle when he's going to struggle and whatnot. I would probably go Riley over him in the pecking order. Uh, it would just be interesting kind of how they approach that with whether they kind of want to, I wouldn't say tiptoe, but be more delicate with him early or if they're just going to go full-fledged. Like this is for the long term uh, yeah. and how they approach that. Yeah, I think it's all about volume with, with some of those guys. And that's why Hummer House, Boswell, and um, you know, Kaspar so is, is a little bit easier to project them. But that's that that's the talent level that they have. And Will Riley, I mean, adding him here late, Derek, just did change things for Trey White and Ty Rogers because you're adding one of the best talents Illinois basketball has had, like ever. And I, I'm not I'm not saying that lightly. Like I, I know the talent that has come in here. But particularly over the last, you know, this millennium and in the 2000s, he is one of the most talented guys that they have added. Now he has to produce. He's 18 years old. So we'll see what that is. Can he be a one and done? But the potential is through the roof. He's added weight, according to Brad Underwood, significant strength since he's gotten here. That This is one of Fletch's most important projects here over the next six to seven months. But what should be the expectation of Will Riley, given his skill set, given his pedigree? I, I think the ceiling is 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 obviously very high. Now there that could be more so in like certain games, certain spots. Maybe you get there down the stretch of a season. It'd be not saying that there aren't some freshmen who are fairly consistent over a course of a year, but even some of the better ones we've seen of late, it takes some time. Maybe first two months of the season. They, they take a little bit of time to, to really settle in and then uh, splash. You know, Io uh, was one of those November, December as a freshman, had some struggles, uh, especially the, the Mizzou game. And then me to Big Ten play was really good. So uh, there could be some of that with him. I wrote it in the, the player outlook that I did on him. I, I wouldn't be shocked if he's Cam Christie-esque. Like, yeah. I, I think that – and and some would push back and say, well, like, Cam was a three-star – maybe low, low four-star type of prospect. This is entirely different in terms of like the, the caliber or how they're viewed at the next level, which is which is fine and accurate. But if you're talking about a slender shot maker, they do – if you're going to make a knock on Will, you're going to talk about his body, you're going to talk about is he going to get knocked around in the Big Ten, can he go to the rim at that size, uh, not in terms of length, but just the mass. 
Cam Christie came in and shot 39% from three, just a pure shot maker, made him off the dribble, made him in pull up twos, threes, um, and impacted it at a, at a pretty good clip. Um, so I think that that's something that he could do. Of course, you could get into maybe, you know, the Jet Howards and whatnot uh, as well, potentially for him. But uh, yeah. I, I want to ask you this, Derek, because you mentioned Cam Christie, that's a spot up shooter. Like, the reason I think Kaspar Yakashonis has such a high ceiling as a freshman and is going to be a top five freshman in this league is because the usage he's going to get, his body type, what he's done at the international, but he's just going to get the ball a lot and make plays. Like he is a lead guard. How is Will Riley going to be deployed in the, in this offense? Because you've mentioned not just a shooter, he's not just a, a scorer. Like this guy can go create for others, create for himself. So how do you expect Illinois to kind of deploy him with Kasparis and, and, and with uh, Kyle and Boswell? Yeah, I think he's somebody that you'll have on the list of can push it in transition. He did that a lot uh, in AAU and showed good vision, uh, ability to just get out and run. He, he handles it pretty well for his size, especially in the open court. Uh, we'll see, obviously, you get in the half court and, and – defenders pressed up against you and how that goes. But I, I think they'll put him, uh, if you're doing like the ball screen action, like breakdown, I think Kasparis will be by far and away the highest as far as Illinois goes. But it, it wouldn't shock me if Will was number two on that list. He might even be higher than Kylan Boswell. Uh, we'll ultimately see where that goes. Uh, and maybe it's close. Maybe, you know, Kylan gets uh, a comparable. But I think it's kind of how they view him, how they think Kylan maybe is, is better suited as a secondary ball handler, kind of like a Trent Frazier. Uh, you know, if as far as I'm not saying he's going to be IO, but if he's kind of in that bigger guard primary option role, like Trent as that off ball shooter, as a guy who can push it, uh, transition opportunities, which I think Kylan's really good at, but maybe in the half court, they don't want to just load him up with a bunch of ball screens. Um, so for Will, I think they can put him in some of those things, uh, but also they'll really – rely on Kasparis to create breakdowns, breakdown, kick out, hard close out uh, from a defender that he can drive it. If you're not, if you're late or if you sag off, he's going to shoot, shoot that shot all day. Uh, so I, I think some of the, the perimeter ISOs um, is something that he can do ball screens and just kind of secondary action. If Kasparis is, is making defenses kind of just break down and, and, and try to recover. So uh, whether that's a kick out to will or kind of get swung around and then he, it's his opportunity to make a play. Uh, he's just a, a guy that is very, very talented and gifted at filling it up and can make hard shots. Uh, that's that's one thing. You'll watch some of his highlights and you're like, oh, I don't know if that's a good shot. You know, there's a, there's a guy up on him. He's got a hand up, those type of things. Because of his size and the way he elevates and just can not get uncomfortable of, of, of being crowded, doesn't need a lot of space to get his shot off. And uh, Illinois is going to have a lot of spacing offensively too, which should help him. Yeah, him and Ben Hummerkhaus, like can't overlook how long those guys are. And they can just shoot right. over people um, in, in some tough situations. Jake Davis was the first transfer addition. Uh, I think we were on our way back from Omaha when, when they added him. And uh, the Mercer transfer comes in. I think we knew this was more of a long-term ploy. But, boy, playing time got really hard for Jake really quickly here, Derek. It did. And I think it was expected, obviously. Um, you know, at that time we were talking AJ store and, and what could happen you know, at one point, David Jones, obviously. So uh, there was always going to be an expectations of, of going and adding on the wing or at the big guard position, but certainly, yeah, as Trey White, Will Riley, uh, um, Rick House, to an extent, like you said, could possibly play some three. So uh, it, it has crowded up for sure, but only being a sophomore. And I think, I think Jake, was sold on the idea of like playing for a winning team. Like he, he wanted to play at a higher level for a winning team, a team that's going to compete for conference titles, deep runs in the, in the tournament. Not saying that as a upperclassman or maybe as a senior, he's somebody that, that adds more in terms of, of minutes share. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But with the way that Brad's reloading every year, you're always going to be in competition for minutes. I don't think it's ever going to be like a clear path. Like here, all right, now's your time. You're, you're no doubt as we go into an off season, the guy, but, um, it's spot up shooting is the big thing for him. Uh, I, I had heard, I, I think I wrote this in, in one of the articles I, I've done, but the last scrimmage they had, uh, there was a four minute segment scrimmage over at Ubin, last scrimmage of the summer, and he hit four threes. So uh, now he's, he's getting those shots because you have a second team playing against the first team. You only play five guys in a, in a real game, obviously, but he has the potential to go on a heater. Uh, you can run him off some screens. They love, you know, Brad's talked about being a movement shooter. So 
that's what they love the most about him. They, they've leaned up his body. They've tried to really, because if you watched him at Mercer, or you looked at some of his analytics, like defensively, he's got to be better. He's got to be able to move better. He's got to be able to cover more uh, against athletic wings. But if he can be more mobile, serviceable defensively, um, and we won't know that till we see him in some of these. Uh, and I think it's really important, you know, some of these early buy games to see what you've got in him. But uh, I don't expect a lot from this from him this year, but it is one of those. Maybe you want some infusion of three-point shooting, and he, he can do that. It would have been ideal back in the day, kind of sit-out transfer. And his skill set kind of reminds you a little bit of Jacob Granderson, right? Like in, yeah. in, in next year, uh, that Ben Home Rickhouse role, you got a guy on the roster that could potentially fill some of that. Not quite as long, uh, but uh, obviously a, a dead-eye shooter uh, like he has been at, at Mercer. So what are your expectations for this wing group? Derek, uh, this is a pretty talented group and pretty versatile too. Yeah, I'm pretty high on it uh, overall. I think I, I love the fact that you're getting 50-some starts at the high major level between you know Trey and, and Ty last year or whatever. Well, it might even be when you go career, you know, Trey started Trey, – I think Trey started 50-some on his own and then Ty 38 last year. So we're talking like close to you know, high 80s or 90 uh, between those if you go their career. So I like the experience. Uh, you get some 21-year-olds who can uh, have, have good physical builds about them. I think both can be good rebounders as we talked about. Uh, you get the scoring punch of Will Riley. So I, I, I like all that. And, and for a young team, you know, Kasparis is going to be young, yet – uh, youth and, and experience in, in the front court, especially uh, the three guys outside of Rickhouse with, with Carey and uh, Visich and Merez. So I think it's important for some steadiness some known commodities in, in the tie and, and Trey realm. How that sorts out is going to be fascinating. And, and then Will is a guy that can really, you know, be a, a ceiling pusher, can really elevate that ceiling for how high Illinois can go this year if he clicks it, or if you just get him to where, uh, you know, ultimately – late in the season, he's playing it at a level that, you know, first round pick and and has matured and, and those type of things as far as his game and just settling in. So, uh, yeah, I like the group. I think they've done a good job. And, and to that point that I mentioned earlier, like not getting AJ, not getting David Jones, um, the way that it ultimately shaped out. I mean, the Will Riley late edition was a game changer. So uh, can't wait to see how that, that plays out. Yeah, it's like a group with a very comfortable, comforting floor with, with Ty and Trey but then just an electric ceiling uh, with Will Riley, who could potentially be your highest drafted player from, from this team, whether it's this year or next year. Man, I I really get excited about what a second year could be for, for a Will Riley. Now, are they going to be fortunate enough to have that? And if he is a, fir a first-round draft pick, he must have done something very, very good. But uh, a second year of Will Riley, whew, that, could be, that could be something dirty. Could be, you know – Potentially like Big Ten player of the year contender, that type of thing. Yeah, that would be uh, a big deal. And we've spent a lot of time on the uh, the 25, 26 Illini, what those guys could potentially be if they get enough back. But yeah, I mean, if he's a first round pick, go and sell it to somebody else in the portal or internationally or whatever, what have you, uh, as far as that goes. And just building up that, you know, let's say you have a situation where Will gets drafted and Kasparis. I know that would stink for that following year. But you would have three first-round picks in two years when you consider Terrence Shannon Jr. as well. So uh, in terms of reloading, that's that's more ammunition to go out there and get more talent. Yeah, and uh, the fact that you can turn it really quickly and, and take advantage of it uh, this nowadays with the transfer portal, I think they'd just be fine.